Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut in our segment titled This Maker's Tools. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite machine tools of all time, the milling machine. This particular model is a benchtop model. It is rarely seen in industry, but I have seen this model in some machine shops for light duty or secondary work. For my shop, it is the perfect milling machine. Now, while my machine is made by a different manufacturer, this one is nearly identical or identical to my model machine. But uh, as you can see, these things range in price right now from $3,500 to $3,800. Uh, so they are a bit pricey. They're not for everyone. When I purchased my machine uh, 15 to 20 years ago, it was much less expensive than that. But this is a common benchtop model machine. Here is another vertical mill, and this is certainly the most desirable type. Uh, it has a knee, it's called a knee mill because of the way the table goes up and down. You have a large crank here to cause the table to go up and down, and you can carefully raise the table while cutting. You still have the quill control up here, but the head swivels left and right this way. It tilts forward, it tilts back. The whole column here moves in and out, and this turret section allows you to rotate the entire headstock and column or ram side to side. So you get a lot more flexibility and capability out of this type of machine. And that's why they exist mostly in industrial shops as opposed to the simpler benchtop mills such as the one I have. But these do come at a price. $17,999 from this supplier. It's almost $100 cheaper at this supplier. So they come with a price, but you sure get a lot of value and capability with that type of machine versus the simple bench top. At first glance, you probably see that and this and think, well, they do the same thing. But this is a milling machine. That is a drill press. And just in that name alone really differentiates between the two what their capability is. The drill press is designed for drilling holes, always cutting down in this direction. The milling machine can also do that. Drill holes, just like the drill press, but it can also cut on the side movements in any direction and cut just about any material. Now we'll go into a lot more detail of that here in a few minutes, but for right now, just think of it this is not a drill press. Kind of looks like one, but definitely not. This is a drill press, and there are attachments called an XY table that you can mount to its uh, standard table. That does not make it truly a milling machine. At best, it's a hack to get something done, but in reality, more often than not, it is more unsafe than it is safe. Let's go into a little bit of side-by-side -side comparison so that you understand there's more to it than just what it looks like. The first thing is our quill sizes. On the milling machine, you'll notice it's much more robust than what we have here on the drill press. The next thing that you may notice is this column diameter in this area. Notice how much bigger and beefier it is on the mill than it is on the drill press. It needs to be big and beefy to support all these dynamic cutting forces that we do with milling that we don't do with drilling. Both machines, as mentioned, can do drilling, and both machines allow me to lock the quill at any position. The drill press operates the same exact way, so they share that feature. One thing that the drill press suffers from dramatically is your ability to finely control the down feed. When drilling a hole, usually you're just working against the resistance of the cut, 
but there are certain operations like reaming or boring where just having the large or speed handle to move the quill up and down is not to your advantage. This is another feature of the mill that does not exist on the drill press. If I engage this clutch, that engages this hand wheel and that allows me to very precisely move the tool up and down. And I can do that at a very controlled rate or at a relatively fast rate. But I can also do it precisely because the dial is calibrated, in this case, in a thousandths of an inch increments so that I can position the z-axis very accurately. Another really critical feature of the milling machine is the size and beef of the whole frame and especially the area supporting the table. If you look here on the drill press, you have a very thin thickness table. It's very flimsy by comparison to what I'll show you on the milling machine. On the milling machine, you can see there's a large platform supporting the table. The table itself has T-slots in it to allow for aggressive clamping of work holding on it. And you'll notice that the thickness of the table is much more substantial than that of the drill press. Now, not only is the size, shape, and beefiness of the tables different, on the milling machine, the table has another feature that makes it very unique and very different from the drill press. The milling machine also allows me to move the table side to side and front to back. We would call this the x-axis and this the y-axis. Going up and down would be the z-axis. By having these hand wheels, which have calibrated markings on them, I can move this very accurately, easily within one thousandths of an inch, or 0 .001 inches. And that is true of both axes. I can also move both axes simultaneously while cutting. That allows me to do fast and efficient roughing or facing operations. The tables also have clamps on them to lock them in place so that it can't move if you're only cutting on one of the other axes. Now because of the heavier cutting capabilities of the milling machine, there's another important difference. The drive for the spindle. On the drill press, you can see that it has very small pulleys with a very narrow belt. Over on the milling machine, you can see that the pulleys are much more massive and the belt, belts are much wider, thus allowing for more power to transmit from the motor up to the spindle. Another shared feature between the two pieces of equipment is to change the distance or gap between the spindle and the work table. In the case of the drill press, you're going to raise or lower the table. Usually there's a clamp, a rack and pinion drive mechanism that allows you to lower or to raise the table. On the milling machine, I have the hand crank. You can see the rack here, but what we're going to do is raise or lower the headstock. You'll also notice that there are massive bolts that clamp the headstock onto the column. That maximizes rigidity. Now before I tighten this back up again, the one thing that is a drawback from this model of milling machine, it has this round column. And what that means or what that causes is a problem when you raise and lower it. If you had your headstock positioned very accurately before you moved it, once you start raising or lowering it, you've lost that position. 
It isn't the end of the world. You would just go through the same process to pick up the same zero point or reference point on the workpiece. And one of the important reasons on a milling machine to lower the headstock is to keep the spindle as close to the workpiece as possible. That maximizes rigidity to help improve cutting performance as well as safety. As the name implies, the machine is capable of doing milling. Milling cutters look like this, and their purpose is to cut sideways along a workpiece. Now, as you can imagine, there's going to be an exceptional amount of side force on this tool during that cut, whereas with a drill, the tool is always cutting downward, axially. This tool cuts both axially and radially. And to do that, as I mentioned earlier, you need a big beefy spindle, but you also need a secure way to hold the tool. Most drill presses have a Jacob style chuck in them or a three jaw chuck. On a milling machine, you'll usually have a collet holding mechanism. This is an R8 collet, an industry standard uh, that's been around for many, many years and it securely holds the tools. Now you'll notice I can just take the tool and slide it into the collet. I'm going to switch to a different tool and actually load that into this collet. It's a little bit bigger tool. I'm going to slide it in. The collet's already in the spindle. Now I use this rod to clamp the tool into the spindle very securely. And at that point, that tool will not come out of the spindle. Now I'll be demonstrating cutting some steel with that tool in a few moments so that you get a better understanding of how important everything I just discussed is to the performance of a milling machine. For a quick demonstration so that you understand what milling is, if you're not already familiar with it, I'm going to machine off the end of this rough sawn workpiece. And this would be a very, very basic and simple operation. But the material is a hot rolled carbon steel and it uh, cuts relatively easily for a steel. Uh, comparative to aluminum, it's much harder and much more difficult to cut but this should provide you with an example to understand the importance of everything I just discussed about a milling machine. I've already got my tool in the spindle, so I'm going to lower the quill down and lock it into place. I will line up my cut just by eye because it's just a cleanup cut at this point. I'll turn the spindle on and then I'll start cutting through it. As it cuts, it's going to be throwing chips towards me. So I'm going to try to get a shield in place so that I'm not covered in hot chips. So hopefully that cut gives you an appreciation for how sturdy these things have to be designed and built in order to perform accurate cutting operations. As mentioned, that was carbon steel, but don't get caught up in the belief that milling machines are only for cutting steels or tough materials. They're great with aluminum, brass, uh, stainless steels, cast irons, uh, aluminum, bronze, all sorts of metals, but don't even stop there. You can machine acrylic with this, plastics, phenolics, wood. The list just goes on and on as to what you can machine with this type of machine tool. 
With all of that, I think we'll wrap it up at this point. Hopefully you got a pretty good understanding of a milling machine and why it's so different than it is from a drill press. If you found this episode entertaining, enjoyable, informative, or whatever the case may be, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe. If you've got questions, be sure to leave a question down below in the comments. I usually check them daily, so hopefully if you've got a question, I can answer it pretty quickly. That'll wrap it up. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.